Shabbat Shalom, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Kaden. I'm Jaden. I'm Paul. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahuwah and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for being here, for being part of our family. We have a tremendous amount of distractions, so we hope that you guys can bear with us in our distractions. Some of these distractions are our four-footed furry friends that we have nine pit bulls, and they make like to make a lot of noise. They surround us at these tables. We also have a roof that is a all tin roof. There's no other ceiling or anything like that. So as you guys can probably hear, if I stop talking, as you'll probably hear like little drum beats all the time. That is not the special effects. That is our roof talking to everybody because that's the way it is out in the middle of a jungle. Cade, will you please open us in prayer? Christian Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for bringing us all together once again. We thank you for being kind to us, being gracious to us. We thank you for your time of feast, your appointed times, and we thank you for those that are with us to celebrate this with us, to celebrate your time. We thank you for putting a family that is looking for your Torah, looking for your ways, looking for your word. We thank you for putting them in our lives, and we thank you for this reunion. is blessed that we get what you have set forward for us to get out of it. We ask that your name is blessed, that your name is to be glorified today, and we ask that today, your Shabbat is Kodesh, and your Shabbat name. Amen. Amen. All right. And guys, again, the growling, and we're sorry. There's the dogs are just like literally surrounding us. Okay. Um, hey, will you please give us our Shema? And guys, for those who do not know what Shema is, if you are very, if this is the first time you guys have ever listened to this channel, the Shema is a, a verse out of Deuteronomy, and it simply means hear and obey. And for those who do not know who Yisrael is, Yisrael is not a little country that's over in the Middle East, Yisrael is the people of our creator. That Yisrael is defined in scriptures as anybody who obeys the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. So by default, we have 45,000 religions out there and every one of them have a different name and a different doctrine. And if you are one of those who are what we call Torah keepers or Bible believers or those who only keep the Bible, this is for you because when you understand this is a very big commandment this isn't just a a this isn't a small thing right here when we're talking about loving somebody with all your heart with all your being with all your might these are lifetime words these are words that it takes a lifetime for us to figure out how to love people with all our heart how to love people with all our being how to love our neighbor as ourselves these kind of things and our Creator has given us this Shema. Go ahead, hit it, Jade. Yeah, O Yisrael, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall impress them upon your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. And shall bind them to the sign on your hand, and they shall be spread between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Okay, and so guys, here we are. Um, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be going, well, let's just use our, our own scriptures okay. on this. We're, we're going to be going through the laws, statutes, and commandments. And what you guys are seeing right here is you're seeing um, us, what we call eating our own dog food in, in the world of code. And I don't know if it exists outside of the world of code, but when you start eating your own dog food, it means you start using your own code. You start using the stuff that you have built so that you're understanding how it runs and how everything is. And so last week we started using our, our own app and this is Yaj Scriptures. This is a app, this is a Google app and it is fully functioning. There's only a few things left that we need fixed and then we will be releasing this absolutely free to everybody that is out there. And so inside of this app, we have our Torah commands, these same commands that we go over uh, week after week, day after day when we do this, this is where we have these put. And so um, before we begin into this, let us, um, say hi to everybody in our family here. And if you guys can hear the roof, this is what I'm talking about. All right, we have Days Rainey, Elizabeth, Carla, the Grand, Irma, Read the Torah, and his son. We have Bone Cat One, Jeremy and Callan, Candy, Ruby, Worldwide Widow, haven't seen him for a while, Jeannie, Not of This World, Lisa, Sister Barb, 
Hanley, which is a new name, so welcome to you. Rosie Chica. And I think that's everybody. I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I apologize. Yeah, but we missed you. We are super, super sorry. We love you all. We thank you guys. For, for those that are listening now and for those who, the majority of folks listen in the future. And so in the future, folks, we love you all and we hope that you are you enjoy this, and we hope that you guys are blessed. And before I get into these, the laws, statutes, and commandments, I'd like to uh, ask everybody out there if you guys would keep Yah's scriptures, um, basically us, the the actual, what we're the the prison ministry. Keep us in prayers, if you will. Um, we are at the tail end of where we are producing our scriptures, and we are we have a hard print. And one thing, the entire business the entire reason that we're doing anything with scriptures at all is because that we have noticed that many of the prisoners out there have been neglected throughout the years there's no way for prisoners to truly get free bibles when you're in prison you get a kind of a little janky king james version um i don't know if they still have those but they they called it was called free on the inside and it was like uh you could get them on the inside in prison but the boys and girls in prison don't have a way to get a restored name scriptures like this. And the entire reason that we built this was to begin a prison ministry. And we have a tremendous amount of friends that are now, I call I call all my brothers in chains friends because I've been corresponding now for probably close to a year, I would say, is what I would say. And during that time, we put out probably hundreds of emails um, over the course, every week we put out emails back to our brothers and, and that we have in there. And they're very, very receptive. The brothers in chains are very, very receptive. And there's s brothers in chains that are out preaching Yah's word, that are out there, that are countering all of the Christian narrative, that are ca countering all of the Jewish narrative that you get in prison. And they, they are on fire. And so we talk to these guys and we mentor these guys and we mentor the new people. We mentor the, the, the people that have been in Torah for a long time. And our hopes and dreams is that we are able to create a free Bible printing press, that we are able to get the Bibles into the prisons absolutely free of charge. And if you guys would help us with these prayers and lift are able to really change the, the, the landscape of the prisons forever and to give hope to the guys in prisons and you know for i know it when you go to prison you get a bad rap everyone gets a bad rap oh you've been in prison but i will tell you the majority of the guys that i talk to have enormously big hearts they're they're all just they they fell from the wayside they got encountered in things that they did not have the right parenting they did not have the right chaperoning lost in the world and they made a mistake and sometimes these mistakes cost them 10 years of their life Sometimes these mistakes cost them all of their lives. And so you have, we have an opportunity to get scriptures in. And we're also going to be opening it up that we have a lot of brothers and sisters. If you guys would like to begin a pen pal ministry, getting letters into brothers, we have a list of people who are ready right now. If you want to talk to them, if you want to help them, if you want to minister to them, send them some Bible verses. Just say hi to them. These guys are the most open people that you guys will ever find. These, these guys are literally a, a diamond in the rough, and they are open to receive the word of Yah, and these are the prayers that I'm hoping that you guys would, would offer up to Yah in for this. Okay, now we are going to begin. Do we have anything in the chat, Mr. Gold? I just want to say welcome to Stella and Shabbat Shalom. Hi, and Stella. Mama CA also joined us too. Hey, Mama CA, good to hear from you all out there. Much love. Seriously, this is a very amazing uh, family that we have out there. Such a is, is such an honor to be a part of this and, and associated with you guys and, and hanging with Yaz people because Yaz people are amazing. Okay, so what we're about to do right here is we are going to go over these laws, statutes, and commandments. These laws, statutes, and commandments are the greatest thing ever. And I will say that to my deathbed. I will tell everybody that. I'm going to shout from the mountains. I'm going to yell at the top of my lungs that these are the greatest things that we have ever been presented in our life besides life in of itself. And they might even be better than life in of itself because they are a way to forever. They are a way to forever that is not a bad forever and as you guys can read in the various books that are scriptures there is a bad place there's a, a place that the rich man and lazarus right remember the story of rich man and, and lazarus and and all he wanted was just a a little bit of water give it from lazarus's finger anything uh, that's the place that we're trying to avoid and if we are those who obey the laws statutes and commandments of our creator 
then hopefully we do not end up meeting the rich guy uh, and looking to have Lazarus give us some water. Okay, commandment number one is be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Every man of the fish, fowl, and every living creature. You are bearing a tree, it's for food. Men and women should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall eat food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard who is covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Every meal should be circumcised at eight days old. Okay, one other thing I want to talk, I saw you guys talking about the prison stuff. If any of you guys out there know anybody that is in prison and knows that they are they're looking, even if you guys don't know they're looking for scriptures, get us their names. We go through the prison email system and we look them up, we find them, and we shoot them over. The very first email that we ever send them is a, we love you. Here are the commandments. The exact same commandments that you guys were reading right here is what we send out to every one of our brothers and sisters in chains. And we just let them know, hey, there's a better way. This is it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And this is how we begin. So if you guys know, brothers and sisters, in um, in prison that we can get a hold of and begin reaching out to them, we are definitely on it. Okay, all right. Um, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Messiah. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name, do not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. No, who is lost or criminals. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other Elohim. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. Do you borrow your neighbor's raiment and return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge the righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cure your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger, Yahuwah, sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make her use this anointing oil on an old person. Do not make her use perfume on an old person. And do not eat the fat. Do what you say you're going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement. Ham Yaketharim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your son of Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be Kadesh, holy. Do not reap the corner of your field, or you shall not glean in your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm their disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie for the taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruit, Shaul, Homer Count, Pentecost. Keep the feast of trumpets. Keep the feast of coat, Shemini Ephraim. If you blaspheme in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Obel, the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being in Nazir. Wear as easy on the four corners of your garments. The law of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. The law of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the front of in your eyes. Write right. the Torah upon your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. And remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol as the pagans do to their Elohim. 
Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the word of the false prophets. Do not make any bottles between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Get a tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year lease. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant astral poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet has to Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get all portions. Your brother's cattle or clothes are lost, and you find them. You must return them. A woman should not wear a pants to a man, nor a man wear a pants to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that you lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. The law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend your brother, do not endure to have a future payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back to the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not lose your ox when you tread out grain. If your brother dies and has a child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah of the Peace of the Coat. Peace of Tabernacles. Okay, so as we are getting ready to read in there, I was uh, <laughs> reading through your guys' chat with us and Jeremy. And I remember I, I was talking, I think I was talking to Jeremy in the chat, in our Telegram chat. But I remember the Christians had this old uh, Christian-y um, movie. It was called The Cross and the Switchblade. And it was this, this old preacher guy that decided he was going to go preach on the streets. And, you know, the whole movie was like it all ramped up real good towards the end. Uh, there was like some gang fight out. And the preacher guy, I think it was a preacher dude that got shot. And uh, he's laying on the ground and he, uh, he stands up and he had his... He, he pulls a Bible out of his uh, out of his shirt, and the Bible had saved his life. And I always thought I thought that was real. It's kind of a, a, an interesting thing. But this this scripture is now we have a what we call a dummy copy, and I don't want to sound like bad, but I really want to try to fire a twenty two shot through this because I do not think a twenty two shot is actually going to make it through this. And again, this book is all completely blank. I'm not shooting the scriptures, guys. I'm shooting a, a scriptures that looks like a scripture. But I just don't think that a 22 is going to make it through this. And so if you guys are walking around with your six pound, two ounce, 103 book tall book, you might actually have some um, protection in case you ever get into a gang fight. You, you, that may be you. <laughs> All right. So there you go, guys. Sister Barbest, if we had a pop, pocket or smaller version, I don't know if I can get it into like a little pocket. So there, there's, the words would be like yeah, you, there's, more... Point There's absolutely you're talking because we're talking one, a little under 1.4 million words, and so that's a lot of words, guys. Um, I don't think there's ever been a scriptures and an apocrypha to this size in this. We had to scour the edges of the earth to be able to bind a book like this, and they couldn't do it in India. They couldn't do it anywhere. We finally found a spe uh, specialty place in China that does just Bibles. And they were able to spit this out, and it is, a, it is completely beautiful. I, I am so excited over the dummy copy that we got, and, we, and we've been spending the entire week going through the actual uh, printed-off copy, making any changes, final changes. They're just about to hammer um, the printing out on this, and it, it's, it's going to be really good. But there's no way to get 103 books into anything that y you would be able to see. It would just be very, very small print. So if we ever do go to a small print, it'll probably be a 66 and the slash uh, 66 book. And then the, the what, 30-something with the Apocrypha? 37, 37 with the Apocrypha is probably the way it goes. I don't think you can get a small version of this. Maybe. I don't know. We could try one day. Okay, so here we are, guys. Exodus 31, as we cruise through the uh, Torah, and Jade, or anybody, let us get a quick recap of where we are at with Moshe to this point, what's happening right here, and let's get caught up. So we have got the last few chapters have been building plans. We have learned how to build the temple. We've learned how to build the ark. We've learned how to build the priestly garments. And we've also learned how to do sacrifices. Moses has gotten all the instructions, and he's seen all the blueprints, so he needs to take these back to the people, and they need to start building. Okay. So we have all the blueprints. We have all the stuff and exactly how it's doing. So... Guys, don't fall asleep on this because some of this, some of this stuff is a little dry. Some because you, you, we don't know exactly what it's doing. Probably, if we understood this real well, we this would probably be really, really super exciting. And I think 
we will see one of these temples in real time at some point in our um, Exodus, in our second Exodus. I would imagine there's something of this same caliber somewhere along the lines. Okay, so Exodus 31. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, See, I have called the name Bet-Salel, Bet son of Kerr of the tribe of Yehuda, And I have filled him with the Ruach of Elohim, wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all work to make designs for gold and for working gold and in silver and in bronze and in cutting stones for mounting and for car and in carving wood and to work in all work. Now, you think this is the only guy, um, the this guy, what's his name, Beth Salo? You think he's the only guy that's really good at this, or do you think Yah just took this uh, dude? I think Yah chose him. I don't know. I'm sure there's other people that actually know you got. Like, what would you call a guy like this, like a master, um, specialist? master, uh, I don't know, silver worker or something of that sort? Silver Craft, silver yeah, master, like a master silver craftsman. Silversmith? Silversmith, well, goldsmith. He's, he's in all this stuff. He's in, in stuff that you would heat up. So this guy probably sits around... Um, like he like huge burning things right getting that stuff melted down so he can do the stuff that he wants along with everything else this guy sounds like a really good um like yeah. a construction yeah, construction the bob vila of uh construction for anybody who doesn't craftsman. yeah craftsman okay thanks world wide widow okay six and i look i have appointed with him oh 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 son of akimak of the tribe of dan and i put wisdom in the hearts of everyone who is wise-hearted and they shall make all that I have commanded you, the tent of appointment and the ark of the witness and the lid of the atonement that is on it and all the utensils of the tent and the table and its utensils and the clean gold lampstand with all its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering and with all its utensils and the basin and its stand and the woven garments and the Kodesh garments for Aaron, the Kohen and the garments of his sons for serving his Kohen and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the Kodesh place according to all that I have commanded you, they are to do. Okay, now as Eli is going over to the Targums, let's discuss that a little bit. How long, gentlemen, do you guys think that it took these guys to make all this stuff? There's a lot of stuff I'd here. I'd say it took a while, right? Think it took a year? Well, probably something like that. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, it's one guy and he has a lot to build. Well, is it one guy or is this one guy that's dispatching a whole bunch of stuff? I don't know if this one dude is gonna be able to put all of this together by himself. He's gonna have to have help. He definitely had helpers. Definitely. I mean, you were talking gold too. You're gonna have to get a lot of people to lift stuff. I mean, especially with the ark and I mean, everything. He said he put, like, I put wisdom in the hearts of everyone who is wise hearted. Right. And they shall make all that I've commanded you. So there was more than one person. So how long do you think it take? Six months? Anyone? I guess Ideas? it depends on how many people he had, right? Because more people had the fastest price can go. Yeah, that's probably true. Okay, so guys, we're heading over to the Targums. And the Targums is... Um, so somewhat leavenish. Every every once in a while, we find some leaven, and this is what we're doing: is, is trying to break the leaven out of this and trying to get to the bottom of what this is. So, again, Exodus thirty-one one, and Yahuwah spake with Moshe, saying, "Look, Moshe, I have called by name the good Bezel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Yahuda, and I have fulfilled him with the ruach of holiness from from Yahuwah in wisdom and in intelligence, in knowledge and in all workmanship." to think in their thoughts at, so as to work in gold and in silver and in brass. See, that's the guy you're gonna to want to have you make jewelry. This is the dude right there, that's the man. Uh, anybody that Yah would instill with this kind of uh, uh, amazing understanding in this. And you know, this is the, again, this is the kind of power that our creator has. We may go through life and we may not think that we are the, the smartest knife in the drawer, but it doesn't matter because our creator will make us the smartest knife in the drawer when we need it. If we're out there serving Yah, if we are out there doing everything we can for him, he's going to enable us in ways that we don't even know. And so this is the same thing right here. He he rose up these guys that were able to do like super amazing um, stuff like this. Okay, uh, metal worker for goldsmith. What, what, what's that word say? Sorefi. Uh, Sorefi Sor Sor for metal worker or goldsmith. Yeah, there you go. Okay, continue on. Um, five. Five. And in the cutting of jewels for their insetting, and in the carving of woods to make all manner of work. And behold, I have appointed with him Aliab, son of Akimash, of the tribe of Dan. And in the heart of every one, wise-hearted, I have added the Ruach of wisdom, that they may perform all whatever I have commanded you. So this is, this is amazing stuff that, you know, and this is stuff that we should all understand is that our creator can give us these gifts. He can instill us with a Ruach of wisdom. He can give us, we can, we can be the smartest people in the entire world, but that's all up to Yah, right? It's all up to what, what are we doing with our fruits or do we have fruits, right? What are we doing with our time? Is our, is our creator 
Are we worthy enough for him to bestow these kind of gifts on us that we're using them in, in his fashion? Okay, seven. The tabernacle of ordinance and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat, which is over it, and all the vessels of the tabernacle, and the table and all its vessels, uh, and the altar of sweet incense, and the altar of burnt offering, and its vessels, and the laver, and its foot, and the vestments for menstruation, the set apart vestments of, of Aaron, the priest, and the vestments of his son for ministry, and the oil of anointing, and the sweet incense for the sanctuary, even all whatever I have commanded you, they shall make. All right, heading back over to Yah's scriptures. What is up, Bonecat One? How you doing? It's good to see you in the, in the chat here. Okay, 12. now we're at 12 here, and I guess this is a short chapter here, so mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be out of here early, folks, unfortunately, because I like hanging out with all of you. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is it? 11? 12. 12. 12. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, And you, speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, My Shabbat doth you are to guard by all means, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that I am Yahuwah, Kodosh, that I, Yahuwah, Kodosh you. Okay. So let's talk about this, right? What Number one, boys, gentlemen, how long, if, if I said, Jade, I want, you to, uh, I want you to draw water every single morning throughout all of your generations, what would that mean to you? What would you think and how would you do this? Uh, I would like draw water, like getting water in a bucket or how I draw the water. Okay, well, I, it doesn't matter how it's doing. I'm, the point is, Kaden, you, Jade, you missed the point. Kaden, take that the point. That means I would, I would draw water. And then when my kids come, I teach them to draw water, and they would teach their kids to draw when does water. The, when do the generations end throughout our generations? When do we? Never. Never. But never until, I guess, the kids stop producing. Right. And, and so when we're saying throughout your chat, we're talking about forever. We're till we don't have family members till nothing pops out of the loins till there's nothing left, right? That is the end of the generations. This says... And you speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, My Shabbat, guys, Sabbaths, high Sabbaths, Shabbat, you are to guard by all means. Not only say you are to guard, but it says by all means. Guys, if, if, this is what it means. This is how important a Shabbat is as a sign between you and your creator, right? By all means, you're to guard this. And like I've talked about this before, if you guard something, if you put up your dukes, you're putting yourself on guard, right? If you put your dukes up, that's how you guard yourself. You put your hands up in a fight so you don't get punched in the face, right? That's what you're attempting to do. And so if you are guarding something, that means you are defending it with everything that you have. It doesn't matter what happens. By all means, we are to guard this and understand that this is a sign between Yahuwah and you. So those in the chat, I know that you guys are all have the sign because we're sitting here on a Shabbat and I know you guys all do it. But for those in the future who come and, and for those who are of other denominations, guys, the Shabbat is a very important thing. The Shabbat is something that when you start keeping the Shabbat, everything in your life will change, your entire world will change, and you will you will find these blessings that you didn't even know you you had. You you had coming. Right, you will there you, right now. You're living in curses because you don't know the blessings you have because we're not obeying the statutes, the laws of our Creator. And this one, when you start keeping Shabbat, the rest of the laws of our Creator will start to fall into into the line. It's not just one single commandment, but it is the beginning of a a covenant between you and your Creator. So let's continue on. Fourteen, and you shall guard the Shabbat, for it is kodesh to you. Guys, that means it is holy, right? This is what we have to understand. This day, from whether or not you keep it at sun up in the mornings or you keep it at sun, sun down to last night, it's a it's kadesh. It's a holy time. It's an appointed time that our Creator has once a week. That it that is just us. And what other religion is out there that wants you to take a day off? Right? There's no such thing. In fact, the Christians will have you go out shopping on Saturday and they will take you to the man-made temple on, on Sunday. It's, it's just not, it's not good. Okay, so everyone, back into 14, everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death. For anyone who does work on it, that bean shall be cut off from among his people. Guys, this is how important this is. This is why we all need to get in sync, in covenant with our creator because he has a way for his people. And these aren't, these aren't, uh, bondage 
If you're saying that have a day off, take a nap, read scriptures, don't work, don't do anything that's that's going to affect your body, how is that bondage, right? That is the complete opposite of a bondage. In fact, that sounds like vacation to me. That's what it is. We get a once a week vacation that our creator has said, look, your bodies were created in a certain way that if you rest, you're gonna perform better, you're gonna get better, your, your spirituality is gonna get better because you're in covenant with me. Okay, let's continue on. Anything happen in the chat? Sister Barb says she got passed over for a job because she put, she'd worked six days but not on Saturdays for Shabbat. Absolutely, let them, let them have their, their little company, Sister Barb. Um, they, will, they, will, they will get what they've sown, right? Um, people need to hire Torah keepers. It, it will bless their companies. I, I really believe that if Torah keepers are involved in things and it's Yah's will, that he will bless all sorts of things just because Torah keepers are around. I've seen it. Okay, um, 15. Six days work is done. And on the seventh is a Shabbat of rest. Kodesh to Yahuwah. Everyone doing work on the Shabbat day shall be certainly be put to death. Okay, that's a heck of a command, right? So um, if the world was under Torah, which they should be, but they they by their own choice are not, everybody should be dead. It's not keeping Shabbat today, right? That is that is the way it should be. All right, and um, I got to wait for the chat actually to disappear for a second because I can't see the rest of this, and I don't want to take the chat off. So hang tight. <laughs> I might have to take it off, but I'll never get it back. All right, here, uh, where are we at, 16 guys? Yep. yep. Okay, let me give it one quick second. And the children of Yisrael shall guard the Shabbat to perform the Shab Shabbat throughout their generation as an everlasting covenant. Guys, it's forever. Guys, it is for all of your generations. It is till the end of time. If you are a human being, it is for your generations till the end of time. Okay, between me and the children of Yisrael is a sign forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made the Shemaim and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets of the witness, tablets of stone written with the finger of Elohim. Now, let's go back into 17 right then, right? Guys, this is where everyone has to understand who you are. There's definitely an identity crisis where people think we're, we're Christians or people think that you're Methodist or people think you're Lutheran or going under this. The identity crisis is that we are Yisrael. We are the people of Yisrael. If you will obey the laws, statutes, and commandments, this is for you. He's making this covenant between me and you. It is a sign forever. How do you become a you? How do you become a children of Yisrael? You become a child of Yisrael by simply obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments. And I say simply obeying the law, statutes, and commandments because when we read them and when you go through them, which we did, there's nothing complex about them, right? The only problem with the Torah is that we don't keep it. And that is the only thing that we have fallen from that. And this is why we absolutely need to keep the Torah. Okay, um, where are we heading into this? So guys, I think this is it. Unless anyone has anything else in the chat room, this was a very quick read. Oh, actually, I do. I got the next part. Never mind, I ain't done yet. I was, I was trying to get rid of y'all. I shouldn't have. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. 3112. And this is back to the Targums. And Yahuwah spake with Moshe, saying, Also speak you with the sons of Yashrael, saying, You shall keep the day of my Sabbaths, indeed, for it is a sign between my word and you, that you may know I am Yahuwah. You shall keep the Sabbath, because it is set apart to you. Whoever profanes it, dying he shall die. Whoever does work therein, that man shall be destroyed from his people. Sounds like good stuff, right? You're going to die. You're going to be destroyed from your people. How? What What kind of, what are we doing? We are breaking the Shabbat. It is a set apart day for us. Six days you shall do work, but the seventh is Shabbat. The set apart Shabbat before Yahuwah. Whoever does work upon the Shabbat, dying he shall die by the casting of stones. Did your 3115 say that we stone them? Read that. It just says, everyone doing work on the Shabbat day shall certainly be put to death. Okay, so that's all it says on that one. So that's in the, the regular Yah scripture. So the Targums tosses in a little bit more, but that would be the case, right? They would die of by casting of stones, correct? Anyone? Right, yeah, Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Anyone? Just... The yeah, the guy picking up sticks. Yeah, the guy picking up sticks. He, uh, he, he went to the rock concert. We should get to him soon, right? Uh, it should be pretty soon, yeah. Okay, 3116. The sons of Yashrael shall therefore keep the Shabbat to perform the delightful exercises of the Sabbath for your generations, an everlasting statute. And I like the way they said this, right? To perform 
the delightful exercises of the Sabbath, right? You rest, you do all your, your pre-work, you don't, you, you just keep the day Kodesh, you keep this day holy. That is what this is about. 31.7, between my word and the sons of Yashrael, it is a sign forever. For in six days, Yahuwah created and perfected the heavens and the earth. And in the seventh day, he rested and refreshed. And guys, this is a this is a major problem with these people and their calendars. And um, I'm not going to bring up a specific name, but again, we had another guy that has another calendar, and he he has a huge YouTube channel. He's got like 18,000 subs, and he's always out there bashing everybody in their calendars. So I went and looked at him, and then we started carrying on a conversation with him, and um, we looked at his calendar, and at the end of this year, there's nine days in a row. There's nine days. He doesn't. He basically does a nine-day work week, and then he says, "Yeah, then then you you then we switch Sabbaths." And this guy switches Sabbaths every single year, and I can't find anything biblical about this. Right, right here in thirty-one seventeen, it talks about for in six days Yahuwah created and perfected the heavens and the earth. Guys, we are on a cycle of sevens and fifties, right? There's, there's always cycles. The thing with our creator is everything has a cycle. The moon has a cycle. The sun has a cycle. The seasons have a cycle. Um, everything, bugs have a cycle. Birthing has a cycle. Women have a cycle. Everything has a cycle, right? It is all part of our creator's thing. And there's this, it's seven days. And so if we are keeping, if we have a, at the end of the, the year, we have to have a nine day week to um, account and make the calendar right, then we're wrong. We're doing this outside of this. And that gentleman that we talked about, as nice as he was, we just asked him some basic questions. How is it that we are observing the seventh day Sabbath when you have a nine day week and the dude wouldn't even write back to us? And so if you're unable to defend your calendar, but you're out there be busting everyone else up, I don't even know what to say. Other than that, it's, it's cycles of seven is what we're looking at. Okay, last verse and the mystical will go into it. And he gave to Moshe when he had finished to speak with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of sapphire stone from the throne of glory, waiting, weighing 40 seen inscribed by the finger of Yahuwah. Okay, does yours others, 3118, does that say it weighed 40 sign? It doesn't say what it weighs, it just says, <clears throat> when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets of the witness, tablets of stone written with the finger of Elohim. All right, anyone know how much 40 sign is? Um, that's the what the ta that's what they're saying the tablets of sapphire stone from the th throne of glory. So that's interesting. That that would have been probably um, anyone know? I have no idea what seen. Okay. The other thing is it says sapphire stone. Not just like it just it just says regular stone, but not stone. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, Sister Barb, Sister Barb is kind of onto that. That's kind of where we were going. You know, we were a decade long of lunar keeping. And then when you like really look into the lunar cycles and the 1%, the 3%, the no percent, it doesn't make any sense at all. And um, that's where, again, we've lost brothers and sisters and people get so hooked up on their, their indoctrination that if somebody has a different idea, they, they don't want to listen and they, they refuse to listen because you're too old and you're too set in your ways. So um, we have to be young in our mind, even though if we're really old, because there's always things that we can miss and things that we, we need to figure out. So what else did you have on that? I was going to tell you that the grandson does cycles, not chaos. Yeah, it is. It is cycles. And every one of these calendars, you know, you start they're, they're They are chaos, right? You have the 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 J word, which I can't say on YouTube, which is um, they, they add their 13th unbiblical month just to try to realign things. And they're doing it based upon citing barley. Um, and that is not biblical. None of this is biblical. So um, we really need a Messiah and we really need our Messiah soon because um, when Messiah Yahushua comes, he's going to set us down and we're going to all probably every one of us are probably wrong in some way we may have some things right uh but we're gonna have to adjust things align things guys we're we're like uh according to to the i think it's the zadoki calendar we're uh like about 40 years away from six thousand years according to the j word that i can't say in youtube they think it's about 300 years and it's nicole found a bible the other day um and what was it it was a bible that was written in 1813 that said that the year 2025 would be 6,000 years. Yeah, year 2025 would be 6,000 years. So regardless of the dates, regardless of the time, no man will know when Messiah is going to return. But this is a good time to get our lives in covenant. We still have a, a time that we can do this, that we can honor our creator, that we can get into covenant with him and obey him by doing what he wants us to do. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, Jade, will you please um, 
bless the people as we get ready to roll. All right. You have blessed you and guard you. You have made a space shine upon you and be great unto you. You have lifted his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon you in Israel, and I will bless them. Okay. All right, guys. So um, with that, we will uh, do our final song, and um, we love you all. We hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys. Oh. forever shine upon you may the the awesomeness of messiah yahushua embrace your life and may you forever find the torah the law statutes and commands a part of your life and forever in your heart mind and soul we love you all sorry for the dogs um yeah sorry guys <laughs> that, that was tubby tiger and yeah for anybody that wants we have a private telegram group if you want to email nicole um or myself uh, she put my email out there it's jboss008 at gmail.com and again it's, it's private only for those of you guys who we know and love 
Um, we, we try to keep any like uh, extracurricular Bible stuff out of it, it not you know stuff that goes against what our doctrines and what our theology is. And so here we are, guys. And Telegram is just an app that's on the phones for chats. Yeah. It's like WhatsApp, if you've ever heard that, but Telegram's what we use down yeah, here. Yeah, they, 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 they say it's supposedly censorship-free, but uh, they're like everybody else and censor everybody. So here we are. Much love, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Shalom. Right. Shalom. Shalom.